everybody and welcome back to today's little bite-sized thrive with me Kim Forrester where I'm offering little tips and tools to help us all enhance our well-being from the inside out take charge of our well-being and turn 2021 into something 2020 wonderful one small step at a time this week I wanted to talk about positivity and I have to start with a huge disclaimer because I understand how easy it can be to believe that if we want to be a positive person if we want to be a happy person if we want to be a spiritual person in a lot of cases there can be a very seductive perspective that what we have to do is try to be positive in all moments I understand the allure <laughs> of the concept of if there is something challenging or painful in your life either trying to suppress that pain and go oh no it's fine i'm fine it's all for the greater good um if there's something painful going on or challenging going on where we go no it's fine i don't have to deal with that i'm just going to look for the bright side all right i do know that i have lived that way myself in the past but here's what i want you to know about that forced Pollyanna type of positivity it doesn't work for us as human beings the research is very clear on this the people on this planet who try to force positivity onto themselves and into their lives actually end up inevitably disappointed disgruntled and actually unhappier than those who accept pain and challenge in my next video, I'm literally going to talk about emo diversity, about the importance of accepting and allowing pain and challenge in our lives if we want to feel fulfilled and content. So that's the disclaimer. I am not ever going to ask you or encourage you or invite you to see the bright side in everything all the time. It simply is not good for you or your well-being. So what am I going to share with you today? Well, what I really want you to understand in this first video is that we each have a negativity bias in our brain. Our brains are wired for those very early years of the human species where we were walking across the grassland. And our brain had to be attuned to perceived threat, perceived danger, right? Anything that was negative in our environment, we had to be really, really aware of. We had to be uh, super, super tuned into anything that was like that in our environment. Well, certainly those of us who were super tuned are the ones that survived. Let's put it that way. So our brains are still running that way now. In the modern day, we are walking around in our daily life and we are inadvertently and unconsciously tuning in to the negative automatically, constantly, we're tuning into perceived threat and perceived danger and perceived negativity. And the media has picked up on this, probably quite by accident or, you know, through trial and error. And that is why our news is actually overwhelmingly negative. So what we've ended up with is this really, really disruptive and unhealthy information cycle and feedback loop whereby we respond to, we notice, and we are attracted to negative news stories. We are attracted to things that involve danger and, and, and despair and, and threat. And then, of course, our news uh, industry is trying to make money by, by engaging people, by engaging an audience, and they have found that, hey, if we put something negative out there, it actually tends to get, um, it, it's more attractive to people. Right, so that's what's going on. Now, here's what I want you to know about your negativity bias. It is inbuilt in us. And therefore, the happiest people on the planet, as I explained just before, do not suppress all negativity because it is actually impossible for us to do that. All we have to do to feel a little bit happier, a little bit more content, a little bit more empowered in our life is to balance out our natural inclination for negativity with a conscious and careful engagement with positivity. All right, we don't have to cancel out the negative. We just have to inject a little more positivity into our life. 
One of the main points I want you to understand from this though, because our negativity bias is deeply embedded and ingrained in our neurological processes, if you are choosing not to consciously engage in positivity, if you are just going through life and you're thinking, well, no, that's fine, I don't want to consciously do any work towards being positive, that does not mean that you are going to settle on some form of neutrality. All right, when we are not working on being positive, we are not neutral. If we are not working on being positive, we are definitely leaning more into that negativity. If we are not trying to be more positive, we are inherently negative. Do you understand? So it's really, really important if you actually want to feel more positive in life to actively engage in seeking out positivity in your world. You have to actively undermine and reverse that negativity bias or override that negativity bias in your brain. So here's your little homework if you choose to join me over the coming days. We're going to actively engage some positivity and override that negativity bias and we're going to do it healthily. So over the coming days, if you see a negative story, and I'm sure there will be many of them out there, okay, if you see a post or, or a news item and something negative has happened, inevitably, because of the way that human beings are made and, and the way that we interact with one another, one another, inevitably, there will be someone trying to solve the problem, someone trying to help, someone trying to bring about a positive solution, a positive end to that particular scenario, to that particular event. Or maybe it might be that people have already engaged in really positive and helpful ways. Over the coming days, whenever you are, become aware of you engaging in some kind of negative news story, it could be on the news or it could be you know gossip that you're hearing, try really hard to seek a little bit further and find the helpers, find the solution makers, find the people who are engaging in positive ways into that scenario. It will take effort, like I say, because our brains are quite happy to sit there and just wallow in the negativity. It will take effort, but if you look for the helpers, as Fred Rogers' mum told him many years ago, if you look for the helpers, you will find them. And it's a wonderful first step in us engaging more positivity and, and overriding that negativity bias, becoming more hopeful, more positive about the world as a whole. Well, there it is, today's little bite-sized thrive. Thank you for joining me, and I'm really looking forward to sharing this little positivity journey with you over the coming days. I'll see you next time. Until then, be well. You're so precious. Take good care of you. Bye.